Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. We have the engine surface clean. We are not replacing the rear main. We're about to double check the cleanliness of the transmission. And we're going to bolt on the manual flywheel. The flywheel on. We put the bolts in with permanent Loctite. They have a special uh, thread lock that comes with it, but you torque them down 33 foot pounds and then 60 degrees. If you don't have a way to hold that crank, you might have to use an impact to tighten them down. Getting the transmission in was difficult. When you put your clutch together with your pressure plate and mount it to the flywheel you have to make sure that the clutch is centered it has a centering tool that goes through the splines of the clutch and then probably hits that center piece on the flywheel so that that clutch is centered when you bolt that pressure plate down it keeps that center that way when you raise the transmission and mate the transmission to the engine those splines fall in place for the uh, crank and all that stuff turns when it's supposed to so you want to make sure you have that centering tool very simple tool for your clutch if you are like me and did not have that tool and the tool supplied to you by your best friend in the whole wide world doesn't fit your car what you can do is set that clutch up there put the pressure plate in start your bolts and step back a couple of feet look through the center of that clutch and make sure it is centered in that flywheel center and then snug that thing down and then torque down the um, pressure plate it is going to have tension on it so you'll think it's snug and it won't be and you'll turn and turn and turn then it'll finally tighten down and torque it might take a little bit, but it will torque. Next, when you go to raise the transmission and mate it up to the engine, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you don't have studs, alignment studs in the engine and in the transmission in the same position. Or you'll fight with that transmission at least for 35 minutes before you take it down and figure out that you got an alignment pin in the transmission an alignment pin in the engine and it'll never go until one of those alignment pins are removed make sure you don't do that next it's difficult you probably need a jack couple people people holding it from the top with a strap from the engine lift Get that transmission up in the position. Work it in the center of that uh, transmission where your throwout bearing is. It has splines that have to go through that clutch. You might have to bump the crank to get those teeth aligned. Slide that in, bolt it in, get that transmission bolted up there. That took us at least an hour with four people, just to let you know. Next thing you want to do is try your best to get the engine in the proper position. I had the engine mount already mounted under here. We got it up so that we can get the bolt into the upper torque mount. We got the front engine mount uh aligned and bolted in then we started raising the subframe 
had kind of a time getting the subframe aligned. We got this bolt started here. We're done for the day. We're going to work on getting the back uh, subframe bolts in tomorrow sometime. But we are making progress. Uh, apologize that the videos are not as detailed and step by step as they need to be, but that's where we're at. Absolutely. We are about to flash and tune the ECU so that it will hold the RPMs correct during shifts. It's going to turn the vehicle from a M.3 to a M.4. 4.4? Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, do a couple other uh, corrections and emissions or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that we'll be running smoother, hopefully get better gas mileage, and have a more up-to-date function of the ignition system. ECU is critical that you have at least 13.8 volts. Gotta do it right. So we are hooked up to the OBD2 port inside the vehicle with the laptop computer. And they're about to reprogram the car. So it will never look for the automatic transmission again. Running through the programming. Hooked up to the OBD2 so that we can have it smooth set. Next thing you need to do is slowly raise the subframe. And while you're raising the subframe, you got to put the key in the ignition, unlock the steering wheel, and make sure you align the steering linkage so that it goes up inside of the. Uh, Peg that goes through it from the uh, steering column up there somewhere and you might have to try to spread it with a screwdriver a little bit once you get it in you may have to go inside and tap it or wiggle it down over your steering linkage so get that steering linkage down in there put the bolt through there put the pin through there then Secure your subframe. Get the bolts in it, 18s and the 14s. Once your subframe is secure, uh, we're going to install the axles. Installed the new seal while the transmission was out and on the ground. We drained the old fluid out of the transmission. Now we're going to go ahead and put the axle in this side. Then Cheers. the other side. So cleaned up and in place. Do the spline next i set my control arm in i got new control arms some swedish car parts and uh it's their custom made ones for the volvos so i'm gonna go ahead and do the ball joint first and then the frame bolts i set the axle in put the carrier bearing bolts in now i'm gonna put the axle in this hub over here and install the control arm on this side Put the transmission mount on. I screwed the bolts, the two 14s in the transmission first, and then put the two 18s on the frame of the car, subframe. I have my bolts tight and my strut here. I have my outer tie rod in tight. I have my bolt tight at my um, ball joint there, control arm, and I loaded the control arm so that it's pretty much level, bearing the weight of the car. Now I'm going to tighten those bolts back there. You should not tighten the frame bolts with this type until you get that level. Having it level, then tightening it stops you from tearing up those bushings real fast. thing I like about these Swedish car parts uh, control arms they got a real nice tight fit and they came with new hardware i like getting the new hardware with them so we're going to feed the master cylinder up through the hole under the uh, brake booster it's a tight hole but it goes 
when we knocked that plate out we really had to hammer that thing pretty good to get that thing to uh, come out uh, from the inside pounding it out really tough we have three bolts off of the brake booster and one very loose so we was able to pull the brake booster toward the front of the car about an inch that was enough to maneuver the master cylinder into the firewall and got those two the screw and the bolt tight that's a t40 and a 13 millimeter now i'm gonna tighten up these bolts back on this brake booster and then install the pedals okay you have to cut the nipple off of the bottom of the brake booster and fit the hose from the master cylinder onto it and put a clamp on it so that it doesn't leak but your uh, master cylinder and slave cylinders run by fluid out of your brake reservoir all right i got all the bolts tight on the brake master and the clutch master now i'm going to install the pedals you take your brake pedal out you actually have to take that arm off of the rod because it is too big to thread through so you have to pop this clip up here off of it and slide that over and off of it to get that out and you're left with that now i'm gonna go in with the clutch and brake pedal which are smaller so they do go on you want to put the pedals in before you put the master clutch master cylinder in i didn't do that so i'm going to remove the uh steering column i'm going to take this 10 and 13 off here take that loose take this bolt out here take this bolt out here that should slide the steering column back and out let me work on that Okay, I pulled this bolt out of the steering column, pulled these two bolts, worked this out, and I should be able to slide the pedals up and under that. So let me work on that real quick. This is five minutes pulling the steering column loose. Then I got the top bracket up here, lower bracket down here, two bolts in the side. I have the brake booster clip there. Clutch cylinder master is clipped there. I got the clutch pedal in its clip. Now I got to hook this vacuum up to the switches and see if I can find a plug for the clutch switch. So I have to push in the clutch to start the car. So let me see if I can find that. Okay, I have the brake switch in. The vacuum there for the uh, clutch, well, I mean the cruise bus. I got a switch here with the vacuum on there. I can't find an electrical plug for it yet. I do have that plugged in, and I see that my um, vacuum came loose, so I need to find that vacuum and put that back on there. Next, I'm gonna put the cables in place. You gotta come in this way, route the two cables through the column and then route the cables through the firewall and push them through the firewall first and then flip them and pull them up through here so that I can put the shifter in place. And the cables through the firewall, they have very small 10 millimeter nuts on the bolts here. Look like they could use a nice washer, but I don't see one. So they go to the driver's side of the steering column. Try not to get that mixed up. The one on the top comes through the middle. The one on the bottom comes through the driver's side. So I have those in place. Now I'm ready to get my shifter here, clip them in place, and start putting the stuff together. Out here. P cable here we've got that stashed away and we took two wires out put them in the loom 
ran them down behind the bracket and up under and plugged them in to a plug here for the uh, reverse light switch. They're down Look, over with, the, with this, this cable tie. Yeah, it, man. Well, this cable tie holds these wires down. You actually got to fold the wires down, and that keeps them clear of the movement of the linkage. Okay, that's it, Dan. We got the slave cylinder in. It has a flat spot that points to the starter, so make sure you got that flat spot rotated properly so that you can slide that all the way in to the throw out bearing and get that clip in there that holds that in place. So that's held in place. Then we came back here and ran the, the liquid line. We pushed it in actually by feel. Put that clip in by feel. So that should be good to go. I think the clip is in the right place or I'm going to move it back one or the other. I'm going to take a look at this video and see what I got to do with that clip. The clip is now in. I took it from the passenger side, drove it through the driver's side. Now we're ready to add some fluid and bleed this thing. I set up my shifter assembly. I broke the tabs off of this ball lock when I uh, pulled the shifter handle off. So I have a new ball lock here. Um, I'm a shifter seat, I should say. I'm going to pop that in, get that on there, try to get some lithium grease on it, and then put it in place, lock it in the shifter, and install the shifter assembly onto the center console area. You know, the last one? And I'm going to put the cables through here, lock them in place before I bolt this down to the center console. I brushed the dirt off of there. I found a seal down there. I pulled that out, cleaned it off, lubricated it with lithium grease. I got that lubricated. Now I'm gonna set this in place and go put this in the car. Put this seat on and I tapped it with the rubber mallet. It broke it. So I set it on the ground and stood on it. That got the back clip in without busting it. So set it on the ground, stand on it to get that locked in or you'll have a broken one like I do. All right, so this cable on the driver's side goes out here on the arm. The other cable goes in there on that one. So I'm gonna feed those cables through, put the clips on them, lock them in place. This is the absolute best number one reason to put a manual uh, in your car. You never have to worry about this shifter selector ball going out on you. Those were hard to get on. I actually tapped them on with a hammer to get those things on. So I'm going to get all the wires out of the way. Set this thing down in here and put the bolts in it. I got the shifter assembly bolted down. Now I'm going to put the center console in. I have a shift boot, but it's not in that great a shape. I'll show you that in a minute. Let me set the center console in place and get that in. I'm just going to tack the center console down because I got to pull all that stuff up again and fix these uh, parking brakes in the next day or two. Whenever you go to put your center console in, Go ahead and pop this button out because it is actually going to be in the way of the shifter and cannot stay there. So you'll have to put a knockout plug or something else there that's not deep. You'll have your wire for your shifter light and your wire uh, green and black for your shift lock solenoid that will be floating around down there. You can tape them or whatever. And of course these four wires go in your ashtray holder. So let me go ahead and put that in now. I got two screws down there, two screws up here, and then I'm going to put the ashtray holder in. I got the coin holder OBD2 port in place. I'm going to snap in this uh, dust fog chill there. Then I'm going to slide my boot and my shifter arm on. Let me show you that stuff. I have a shift boot here. It is beat up. 
it's got some broken plastic down in the uh, channel of it that clips on the thing. So you see it's got a wide part and a thin part. The uh, thin part goes toward the back. The wide part goes toward the front. I'm going to slide it down there. It's supposed to link in on this part of the shifter thing. But it's missing a collar, missing a sleeve. It's probably just going to go down on there and be kind of a mess. It's down to the first notch. Now it's down to the second. So that's what I got for a boot for now. I'm going to try to get that fixed up and cleaned up another time. Here's the shifter knob that I had. I'm not going to use it. It'll lock in good, but it just looks like crap. Nice little rubber mount uh, shifter. My friend Dan gave me this one. So it slides down and locks in, hopefully, like this one would have. Oh, here's the collar for that boot. So I'm going to try to pull this collar off of this shift knob if it will come off. Because that collar is down on top of that. This one didn't have a collar. So maybe I can transfer this over. Let me try. These shifters actually look different down in the channel of them. This one may not work for me. But we'll find out here in a minute. This is the one that belongs. This is the one I want to use. Slid right on and just about locked in place. This one doesn't seem to fit. I'm going to mess with these release tabs on the side, see if I can get that thing to slide down there, but I don't want to damage it, so I'm going to see how that goes. Well, this thing doesn't seem to work, so I'm going to not damage it or destroy it, leave that one on there. Plus, I slid that down too far, and it locked in place, and I really don't want to bust my ball seat down there trying to get that back off so that's where I'm going with now if anybody knows where I can get a shifter let me know everything looks good here I'm gonna go ahead and put the panel in under here and reinstall my seat and my floor mats next I'm gonna install the knee bolster up under the dash start off today this is actually day four we had a short day one about four hours we had a full day two, about 12 hours. We had a full day three, about nine hours. And then here's day four, which will probably be about three hours just wrapping up a few things. But I'm gonna start this day off by servicing the manual transmission. The transmission is serviced through the top hole, which is there and it's drained through the bottom bolt hole which is under it the car is sitting relatively level on these jack stands to make it a little easier what I'm going to do is pull this switch out here I'm going to unplug this reverse uh, light switch then I'm going to pull the bolt out of it then I'm going to pull the service bolt out here and I'm going to fill the fluid in until it starts to come out of that bolt hole. And that's when I'm going to stop, reinsert this bolt, reinsert that switch up there. So you can fill it through here if you have a quirky, awkward funnel system. Or you can fill it in through that hole there. This is only the manual transmission. Don't pull any bolts out of the top of the automatic transmission or you'll destroy it. This is a contraption that you could use to fill the transmission. Uh, this thing actually screws right onto your bottle sizes and acts as a funnel. You could dump them in with that. It's the easiest thing. This uh, is limited slip differential, I guess, uh, gear oil. Um, this may be the proper weight for this car. I actually have the Volvo stuff uh, purchased from Volvo, I believe. Ugh. Yeah, this is the Volvo stuff right here. If this thing comes in focus, I believe it is 75W90 um, gear oil. You can get the gear oil like this. I have actually heard of people running. 
full synthetic mobile engine oil in their transmission a 5w30 is supposed to be the same viscosity and weight as this uh, gear oil uh, hey if you sell it by the five quart jugs you can sell it for $33 if you call it special gear oil you can sell each one of these uh, a, a, a liter size which is a little bit more than a quart for $25 so you'll spend $70 versus $33 in gear oil and it's up to you I haven't heard anybody having any issues with the mobile one full synthetic oil I'm just kidding about it being the same oil my uh, uh, thoughts are engine oil because they deal with combustion has different additive packages so even though the oil will function fine in your transmission it probably has different additives and cleaners than your gearbox oil will have so it's probably a little bit better to get the gearbox oil over the engine oil but hey like I said many people have run the engine oil and haven't had any issues and um, I'm not kidding about that I've actually put the engine oil in people's manual transmission years ago and the transmission still running fine we did drain the old fluid out so let me go ahead pull this bolt get this stuff uh, flowing and move on to the next step to get the switch out you need a deep 22 to get the service and drain bolts out they are 24 millimeter and this is how that switch looks when you're in reverse it pushes that in so that the reverse lights come on when you're not in reverse that goes out so the reverse lights cut out before you pull this reverse switch out I would recommend that you spray some brake parts cleaner or something around there get all the crud and dirt from around there that way when you pull it nothing falls into your transmission here's the funnel tool you find the adapter that fits on your bottle and screw it on there put the tip in and turn it upside down here's the gear oil pouring in as you can see it's relatively thin looking stuff it's not no thick greasy oil that people would think it would be the transmission that we serviced was pulled from another vehicle we did pull the drain plug and let it drain out however this did not take two liters it took uh, probably 1.9 liters to fill it up so I have a little oil left all right now don't try to put a washer on this because you'll raise the height of the switch and it won't work so put it on like you got it off all right we got the plug back in tightened up and the electrical contact on it electrical plug on it make sure your clutch booster hydraulic line fluid line is running right make sure your brake booster line is running on top of it correctly next we're going to hook up the coolant hose put the coolant hose back on there and go from there or radiator hose in this uh, harness bracket that was for the auto would be chafing into my coolant hose so I went on ahead and clipped it off we don't need that no more. next we're going to bolt the ground wire onto the front of the transmission right there the ground bolt going in the trans is a 12 and the clamp bolt right there is a 10 next we're going to bleed the clutch system that looks like 8 millimeter so we're going to fill up the reservoir make sure it's full then we're going to crack that open and bleed that down until we get all the air out of that line now look bleeding the slave cylinder you have to just about fill your brake reservoir all the way up because it has a little chamber that it feeds down to the master's clutch cylinder fill that thing up as much as you can come down here hook up your bleeder hose and we use the brake bleeder hand pump put a vacuum on it open that up suck that down pretty quick filled it back up we didn't let it get really 
no lower than that top bin. And we were recycling the fluid that was coming out until we had no air. Went inside, pushed on the pedal, the pedal would stay down to the floor. So I came out here and I pushed in this a couple of times that pushed in on the plunger of the slave cylinder and I could hear air coming up through the bottle and that seemed to burp it. So now on the inside, when I push the clutch pedal, it returns. Push the clutch down, goes to the floor, let it go, it returns right back. Right now the linkage is rubbing against the plastic on this uh, auto uh, loom. So that needs to be moved or secured some kind of way. I probably need to change it with one from a manual gearbox. So I'm going to work on trying to get this secured over at least a half inch and uh, go from there. The thing was probably three feet long and I wrapped it around the wire loom, got it quarter inch clearance for my shifter stuff. Ran it under this bracket here that holds my crank sensor plug. I ran it under the uh, coolant hose, and it doesn't seem to be touching the coolant hose on that side. So we're good to go. Got that off of there. Wow, that took a long time to come in focus. Tore my boot a little bit putting the cables through, so I put a... a I guess it's a 7 mil glove on there and put a couple zip ties loosely over the crack in it to protect it from getting dirt. The zip ties are not tight, but it's a little extra protection. Due to the fact that I now have shift cables in there, I can't let my vacuum stuff just hang and dangle. So I'm going to attach that to the air box like I had it when I pulled it out so that that stuff doesn't chafe it. Time to put in the air box. The rest of these turbo pipings and then the battery. One with my BCS attached to the side of it. Got my battery tray in, my battery in. I got my things plugged into my cruise control, the wire, and the one vacuum. Turbo line in, get ready to hook up this turbo tube, put on the throttle body thing, and my air tube for my ECU. And is going to hit the key. Make sure it's in neutral. Guess it really don't matter. See if she fires up. Power steering. We put the air guide in under the vehicle. And I learned something new today from Dan. That air guide has a latch that goes on the bottom of the radiator. So... Probably the first time this air guy's been in right since the car was purchased. Being hooked up and done, and the Panther is coming down off the jack stand. Come on down, Panther. Let's hit the road like a I was gonna get this, uh, mountain lion. Us two. See if it rolls. Oop, I got my seat full of stuff. Dan's gonna ride with me, so I gotta toss that in the back. Okay, one of the downsides in having a manual is that you don't have the clutch push in safety. So you gotta make sure you're in neutral or the clutch is down before you start it because it will fire right up. Let's fire her up. We don't get an OBD2 anymore unless the vehicle's running because of the tune. This fires right up. We're going to see if we got it reverse. We hope that's reverse. And we are backing up. It's chattering a little bit. Well, you got a fresh clutch. Fresh clutch, Dan said. New steering rack. Steering feels a lot lighter. A little noisy still. Probably working the air out of that. So we're going to take it on a little drive. The Panther is running incredible, shifts great and smooth, feels wonderful. I'll probably forget that I ever had an automatic tomorrow. Now the ECU was tuned to the T5 uh, S7098 model with the spark plugs and wires and all that stuff. 
that car had white injectors. Those white injectors has the same flow pattern as the blue injectors, but the blue injectors were set for a higher pressure fuel pump. So we're going to temporarily install a set of blue injectors so I don't run lean. If I ran this car with these orange injectors that it came with, it would actually run lean and I was accelerating in one of my uh, maiden voyage runs with it and I got a check engine light and that check engine light was likely for knock from running lean. So we're going to change these injectors real quick and then I'll be on my way back to Cincinnati. If I didn't have white or blue injectors, I would need to run my original ECU until I got said injectors because it's just not good running these old injectors with the uh, 98 team. Now we have the blue injectors installed. We should have no fuel mix problems and I will run rich rather than lean. Lean burns valves. Rich burns gas. Okay, so when we went on our test drive I didn't have any turn signals and no cruise through the fuse to the turn signal. The reverse wire circuit and the turn signal circuit are the same. So we're good to go. I don't have any reverse lights right now. I'll fix that in a couple days. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.